Hey guys, Gravy here. Uh, this is going to be my first YouTube video on my channel. Unfortunately, I was hoping it was going to be a different topic, but something important came up, so I need to talk to you guys about it. So, for those of you who don't know already, I am the Melee representative for Hitbox. My job for the company is to vet the controller, test it for inaccuracies and problems, and give feedback for improvement. But the reality of the situation is that the company is small and they don't already have a footing in the community yet. So I need to be putting forth the effort in order to establish this foothold. So this means that it's very important for any of you who believe in this project to support me and to support the Hitbox. The reason I'm bringing this up, that I'm asking for support, is because yesterday uh, we received information that the Genesis TOs do not plan on having Hitbox be legal at Genesis 4. Their main counter argument was that the motions involved in GameCube muscle memory are representative of what it means to play Smash. Well, I have to say, this sounds a little bit unreasonable to me, coming from the same community that in 2013 was demanding acceptance into the fighting game community, a community where almost every game has multiple different controller options that people play on in a community that, given access to the hitbox, would likely have a lot of crossover of people actually picking up Smash and actually taking it seriously as the technical game that it is. Uh, and it's not even just the fighting game community, even within our own sub-communities, we see people using different controllers. The N64 players are now using keyboards, Xbox controllers, PlayStation controllers, GameCube controllers, Horries, as well as the original N64 controller. Even in Smash 4, people have been switching to the Badoom layout, which, despite being on a GameCube controller, is still a remapping of the buttons on the GameCube controller. So regardless of all this, I'm going to do my best to address this argument, as well as any other arguments against the controller. In my opinion, the worst thing that can happen is people making an uneducated decision, especially when the magnitude of the situation is so heavy. Frankly, <clears throat> I've not been able to discuss the controller with these TOs specifically. <clears throat> I'm aiming to get on the commentator's curse with Tafikans and the Crimson Blur, but that's the farthest I've gotten so far, and I need to make an effort to reach out to Juggle Guy as well. But anyways, let's take a step back and look at the controller situation within the Melee community right now. For years, people have been trying to adapt to the restrictions of the GameCube controller. This started with things like Claw, which I use myself. The reason for Claw is that you don't have to move your fingers as much, and you can hit the buttons more quickly. People have also been taking springs out of their L and R triggers because, frankly, they're painful to press, and they also want to be able to press the digital button without having to go through the analog inputs. And recently, controller modification has taken off and ramped up heavily with the adoption of things like the Godano controller. They now have notches for shield drops, perfect wave dashes, Firefox angles, the list goes on. Kadano himself has written a well thought out article about why dashing back specifically is an issue within our current setup, and he's gone a long way towards remedying this issue for us. What I'm getting at here is that we've been trying to adapt to the limitations of the GameCube controller for 15 years now in various ways. I know that I'm not the only person who's seen Mewtwo King at a tournament buying up every controller he can get his hands out, and he always tests them for the same things dash backwards, jump cancel, grab ledge dash, stuff like that. He's trying to see how flawed this specific controller is. But we don't all have that option to just buy up mass amounts of controllers. Most of us have to go out, buy a controller, and just praise to the melee gods that it's good enough for us to use. A lot of times it'll be a situation where the controller uh, dashes back most of the time, but it can't shield drop to either side, and we just say, well, I'll just notch it for shield drops. Or the vice versa, where it shield drops very well, but it doesn't dash back, so you just say, oh, I guess I'll just turn around less while I'm playing. Obviously, this is not the optimal solution. So, Hitbox is actually just the natural evolution of this concept. The fact is, the Hitbox was created by an actual Melee player, and vetted by myself and others in the community, and that means that it specifically addresses the weaknesses that we've been struggling with. In fact, it eliminates the inconsistencies inherent in the GameCube controller. This controller, the hitbox, it never accidentally tilt turns, which has been proven to be an issue of variance. If I attempt to dash backwards, jump cancel, grab, as long as my timing's correct, I'll get it every single time. The fact of the matter is that on the GameCube, you can have perf perfect muscle memory and still suffer forced errors. 
The hitbox doesn't suffer from problems such as the control stick shifting clockwise over time, making all the angles you've gone and gotten used to become different. It doesn't depend on a thing, something like a spring to do things like return your stick to neutral, which can just decay over time and become weaker and slower. And also there's the point that it doesn't have discrepancies between controllers, meaning that if two people are using a hitbox controller, they would be on a complete, even, and fair playing field in a way that two GameCube controllers can never possibly reach. For example, it's possible to have a GameCube controller that has a 90% dash back rate as well as perfect shield drop notches and even wave dash notches. And you could be playing versus somebody else whose controller has a 60% success rate in dashing back and it doesn't shield drop to either side and on top of that the control stick is a little nub that hurts to touch. Uh, so obviously there's actually a level of fairness between two people using a hitbox. But some people like to suggest that addressing these issues makes the hitbox an easier controller. That it makes the game easier and takes away the skill. But this is where I've argued the difference between ease and consistency. The fact of the matter is that it's not difficult to dash back on a GameCube controller or on a hitbox. In fact, it's trivially easy. Moving your, moving your thumb from neutral to backwards within one frame is so simple that anybody can do it. But even if you execute it perfectly every time, you just will not get it every time because of the inconsistency of the GameCube controller. On the hitbox, again, it's trivially easy to press backwards, but this time, the controller actually does what you tell it to do. I will admit that there are things that have been made easier with a hitbox, and the biggest one is definitely shield dropping. You do get easy shield drops. However, you have to understand that it is a trade-off. There are some things that become harder, and in my personal experience, one of those things is just short hopping. You have very sensitive Sanwa buttons on the hitbox, and if you overpress it all the way to the bottom, the time that you spend overpressing it and then releasing it could possibly go over the short hop timing and give you a full hop. And for a while, it took me a long time to relearn how to short hop, even though I can do it correctly on the Y buttons on the GameCube controller. Another example is stuff like simply wave dashing requires twice the button presses of wave dashing on a GameCube controller. And pivot wave dashing is similar, so you have almost double the APM in the same, like, in, you have almost double the button presses in the same amount of time as the GameCube controller has. So, in my opinion, some things are just objectively more difficult on the hitbox. But, it, or an example is that if people saw me at uh, Smash the Record when I did a presentation on the VGBC stream, you would notice that sometimes people asked me to do things that were simple on a GameCube controller, but because I had not had the time to practice it yet, on a hitbox, I was not able to do those things because some things are not as intuitive. For example, aiming your Firefox angles on a hitbox requires a lot of actual effort in learning how to do it, and it's not as intuitive as it is as just aiming your analog stick towards the ledge or whatever. Anyways, in my experience, arguments like this are just being made by people online who usually do not understand how the hitbox actually works. There's a trend of people online vocalizing that it should be banned for blatantly false reasons such as the hitbox has macros yet almost a hundred percent of the people who I've either had a chance to talk to or have shown the controller to in person are in favor of the hitbox including community members like Drug Fox, Ice, Hugs, Gimmer, SJ, Armada, Wizzy, Plup, Esam, Wife, Hbox, Captain Crunch, Mike Hayes, PPU, the list goes on and I mean it's not even just the community heads in a poll that TAFO ran on Twitter with almost 2,300 votes, there was a majority vote in favor of legalizing the hitbox. Another argument that I've often run into is that the hitbox controller is able to do pivot up tilts out of dash dance. This is the one piece of tech available to the hitbox that I've yet to see anybody perform in the GameCube controller. And while this does give the hitbox yet another advantage over the GameCube controller, this is just a product of being designed for our actual game. You guys can't just take the fact that the hitbox is better for a specific game and perceive it as a negative. I like to draw the analogy to early man saying, well, you guys need to ban hammers. It's unfair that you can pry out nails and my rock can't. And besides, I've been using my rock forever and now you expect me to relearn how to use a hammer. It's just, this is the natural progression of technology. The guys at Hitbox have developed something that specifically meets your needs. It just does the job better. It's a superior tool. So anyways, let's bring it back to the example of Mutaking. 
another overarching example <clears throat> or another overarching issue that the Melee community has is the deteriorating hand health of the community at large. You guys know as well as I do that the GameCube controller is just not good for your hands and frankly it's kind of painful to play with. The triggers require a large amount of force to activate, your hands have to be clenched the whole time, and holding the controller puts weight on your forearms, which leads to the common leading forward posture that we see almost every smasher doing where they're like this, putting more weight on their forearms and bending their back. This is terrible posture for your back and that serves to only exacerbate the problem. This controller is confirmed by both applied and medical ergonomists, specifically Dr. Caitlin McGee and my girlfriend Dr. Biscuits. My girlfriend especially would be happy to feel questions about this topic, and I'm sure that despite the fact that I cannot speak for Dr. Caitlin McGee, that she would also be interested in talking about this. Yet with all of these benefits of the controller, we have an issue where the TOs themselves are stonewalling the project. We're able to use the hitbox at certain locals like the Foundry or CFL Weeklies, but we need the ability to set a national precedence. Without the support of Genesis, the project might be dead in the water. Before yesterday, the plan was to use Genesis as a jumping off point, establishing case law for legality and, <clears throat> in general, building hype for the Kickstarter. It would also give you guys an opportunity to track my progress, to see what kind of learning curve the hitbox is showing after about three months of practice. This also <clears throat> works together with the amount of uh, info that I've been keeping with my Google Drive documents, where I track my progress daily and everything like that. Uh, so <clears throat> if Genesis were to go as planned, we could have these controllers mass produced as early as January, and the rest of the community could finally have access to this option. But like I said, this is a grassroots movement. We're trying to get a foothold in this community, and we cannot do it without your guys' passion and without your support. So all I'm asking for you guys is to talk about the issue, bring it up to your TOs, bring it up to your friends, retweet this video, and just keep it <clears throat> at the front of everybody's mind so that we can try to get it legal for Genesis and we can try to actually get this thing moving forward. <clears throat> this uh, project is so good for the growth and the longevity of the community that it would be a shame for it to get shut down right now. It's just so... It's just... I feel so passionately that this needs to move forward that I just felt that I had to make this video and I had to get it out there. But uh, anyways, that's pretty much the end of my rant right now. And <clears throat> I just hope that you guys you guys can come to an agreement with me. And you know, regardless, you guys can stay tuned and I will be making instructional videos on how to use the hitbox. And uh, I'll have them out soon. Alright, I'll see you guys later.